Okay, so this is the first class for Calculus 1. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, two important concepts in Calculus 1. One is called derivative, the other is called integration. Okay, uh, and um, those two are going to be the main thing in all the calculus series. Okay, but to start, we're going to go to talk about derivative. Okay, and uh, before we touch the definition of derivative, let's start from the very beginning to look at some very basic concept. And then uh, we're going to talk about the definition of derivative. Uh, in the follow uh, in the following sections. Okay, so the first section we're going to talk about one topic, uh, which is called the rates of change. Okay, so we start with uh, one example. This example is called the average speed. Okay, average speed, and uh, you see I draw a graph. Here, suppose we uh, we have a car that's done to driving. Uh, you see right now I'm in uh, Houston, uh, Texas, and then if I want to go to let's see uh, Atlanta or I don't know maybe go to Dallas, right, or even longer Chicago. Anyway, uh, so. You see, if I use a function f stands for the distance function, and then I start from here, and after t1, let's see, uh, hours, okay, and then f of t1 stands for the miles I drive, okay, and then at t equals t2, which is here, and correspondingly, f of t2 is the distance from the beginning. Uh, to you know to, until after t two hours, how many miles I drove? Okay, and the question is asking, okay, what is the average speed over the time interval t one, t two? Okay, so as you can see, guys, on on this graph, you know, to calculate the average speed, it should be very uh, a simple task. All I need to do is to figure out the difference of distance, right, between t1 and t2, which we have it here is f of t2 minus f of t1. And on the graph, you can see this even clearly. You will see that this is the distance traveled in the t1 hour. This is distance travel in t2 hours. So the difference of the distance, which is this red line part, okay. And then over the time spent, right, which is t2 minus t1. And then I can get the average speed, right, over the time interval t1 to t2. So this uh, is a very uh, uh, easy uh, example. And then with this, let's expand this idea into a more general um, term in mathematics, which is called the average rate of change of a given function y equals fx with respect to x over the interval x1, x2, okay. And then the concept is also very straightforward. It's the change of f values, which your initial um, f value evaluate at x1, which is f of x1, and the n part, which is f of x2, so you do a difference, okay, over the values, 
right, over the difference of x or the difference of this interval, which is x2 minus x1. So this formula is called the average rate of change, okay, of this function over this interval from x1 to x2. And uh, if we look at its graph, uh, it will be more clear. So you see, I plotted a function fx here, which is this curve here. And uh, you see, I also labeled x1 and x2 here. Okay, guys. Now look at this, guys. Um, the difference on the vertical side which is you see this is x this this point is x1 comma f of x1 right x coordinate and y coordinate this point is x2 comma f of x2 so the difference for the x values which is this piece is, right and the difference over the x values which is this part and uh, if you look at the definition of the average rate of change again, fx2 minus fx1 over x2 minus x1. Remember that, guys, this is exactly the slope of this straight line passes through those two points. Agree? Right? And uh, in mathematics, we call this type of slope, which you have two intersection points with a curve we have a name is called a second line okay so this is called a second line okay and also you can tell that the average rate of change over this interval which is this value also equals the slope of the second line passing those two points x1 f x1 x2 f x2 okay so from the average speed right we expand our idea into a more general concept average rate of change okay and also from a graph we can tell that the average rate of change also can be interpreted into the slope of seeking line passing those two points. Okay, so this is what we talked so far. Now, let's go on to another piece here. Okay. Okay. So first of all, let's look at the right hand side, okay? And uh, let me also introduce another concept, which is called a tangent line, okay? What tangent line is, is you see that this is, assume this is a function, okay, this curve, let's see this, this is a function f of x. And I also take one point uh, from this uh, function, I take x1 here, okay, you can see. And the slope of the tangent line, is a line that passes through the point x1, fx1 and that line only passes through that point on this curve. Okay, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, you just uh, have a touch and then only at this point, okay, only at this point. Um, so, because you think about this, guys, if you uh, just uh, rotate this line a little bit, it will have one more uh, intersection point, then they're going to form a second line, okay? So, first of all, uh, this, uh, this is what we call a tangent line at x equals x1, okay? And uh, there is also something... Uh, we want to think about it. You know, when we introduce a strict line, you know, whether it is a second line or it is a tangent line, a common question we will ask is, okay, how to figure out 
the slope of this line, right? In the previous uh, slides, we talked about, okay, the slope of the second line can be calculated through the average uh, average uh, rate of change for a given function, right? But how do we figure out the slope of this tangent line? Well, let's first look at this graph, okay, on the left hand side. Let's see this. You see, I started to again draw a function, fx, and then I plotted two points, okay. But uh, this time, the notation is a little bit different with the previous part. I denoted the first point as x1, and I denoted the second point as x1 plus h, okay. In other words, the difference over those two points, x1 to x1 plus h, as you can see that I denote it as h. And uh, later on, you're gonna see that uh, why I denote it in this way, okay. But uh, first, let's take a look at this. You can see that from this, we can easily calculate the slope of the second line, right? which is the average rate of change over the interval from x1 to x1 plus h. Let me write it. So the average rate of change over the interval x1, x1 plus h can be written as f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 over x1 plus h minus x1 you see is h okay as we mentioned this average rate of change of this function over the interval can also be interpreted as the slope of this second line okay but now the question is, okay, so with the new concept of the tangent line, which is this red line, how to figure out the slope of the tangent line at x equals x1, okay? And this is the idea, guys, okay? Now, you think about it this. If I fix x1, okay, in other words, x1 will always be this. But meanwhile, I start to shrink this interval. In other words, I let this h, the difference, become smaller. Let's see what happened, okay, guys? Okay, so now let's take a, a middle point here. In other words, half of this difference interval. And correspondingly, I got to have here is f of x1 plus h over 2. Okay? And correspondingly, this is x1 plus h over 2. Okay? And uh, if I see if I can have a different color, if I connect it. With those two points. Okay. Okay. Do you agree that guys? The slope of this second line is getting close to the slope of this tangent line. Right? And of course, you can even half of the difference, you're gonna have its which is right here, which is x1 plus h over 4. And uh, you can see that if you draw uh, a second line, you will see that the slope of that second line will be a 
better approximation for the slope of the tangent line. Okay, and of course, as many of you now can see, we can continue this process, right? Anytime half of the difference interval, half of the difference of the interval. And you will see that we can continue to do this process forever because how small is small, right? You can always let the number to be half of it, okay? Um, but meanwhile, you can see that uh, there are going to be some extreme situation. You will see that at to some point, you know, the slope of the second line gonna be infinitely close to the slope of the tangent line, right? Because you can see guys, if the difference of those uh, two points has become super, 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 super small, then it's kind of like the slope of the tangent, uh, of the second line and the slope of the tangent line, they become into one. In other words, two points, they climb into one point. And this idea is what we call a limit progress. Okay, limit progress. And uh, we have a notation to denote this, which can be denoted as LIM as H approaches zero, F of X one plus H minus F of X one over H, okay? And as you expect, if this limit exists, then this limit is gonna be the slope of the tangent line at x equals x1, okay? And also, we have another name for the slope of the, this tangent line at x equals x1. If you link the idea about the average rate of change, okay, then you cannot think about it here is this gonna stand for the instantaneous rate of change at x equals x1. Okay, so that's everything about our first uh, lecture in this calculus one series. Okay, we talked about the average speed. Starting from there, we discussed the average rate of change, and on top of that, we introduced the concept of second line, which is the line have two intersection points with a curve, and then we introduced the tangent line concept. Right, which is just a, uh, it's, can, you can see it's just a touch with one point for a given curve. And then we're starting to think about, okay, how to figure out the slope of a tangent line, okay, at a given point. And you can see that we use the idea of seeking for the slope of a second line, but we, every time, we shrink the interval between those two points. And uh, after a couple of iteration steps, you will see that the slope of the second line is gonna be very close to the slope of the tangent line. And how do we interpret this? We use a limit progress, okay? Because you can, again, you can always, uh, shrink the difference between those two points. In other words, this H is going to become very close to zero, okay? And then uh, we can figure out if this limit exists, that are going to be the slope of the tangent line at x equals x1. Meanwhile, it also stands for the instantaneous rate of change of the function fx at x equals x1. Okay, so that's all about today. Thank you.